the purpose of this video is to talk about how we might characterize the response of a system to an input. And typically, we're interested in how systems react to step changes in inputs. So for example, uh, I've got an air conditioning system and I change the uh, desired temperature from uh, say 80 degrees to 75 degrees. How does my system react? Or I have a digital circuit um, and I'm interested in how the circuit will respond to a change in an input voltage from say 0 to 3.3 volts. So um, we're interested in typically how our system reacts to uh, to abrupt changes, but uh, these, uh, these the way we're going to characterize these things can also be used in other circumstances as well. So um, the idea is that we have a system that's got an input and an output. And the input is going to be the unit step function. We want to see what the output's going to be. And we want to characterize how what the output looks like. So um, we'll graph the unit step function here. So this is T. This is U. Actually, we don't want to put it there because we're going to need that space in a minute. Um, uh, yeah, this is U of T. And we put this into the system, and quite often something similar to this comes out. It takes a while, and then it starts to go up and it might overshoot where it's supposed to go up, comes back down, and then keeps going. And uh, eventually, one of two things typically happens, at least if the system is stable. If the system is unstable, then uh, this output may then just take off like this or something, which is always a bad thing. So typically, one of two things happen. Uh, one thing that could happen is the output just basically becomes more or less constant. And um, in this case, we define what we call the steady state error to be the difference between our desired value and the value that actually ends up coming out. Um, Again, this sort of operation is, uh, happens very, uh, or this sort of uh, situation that we're looking at occurs quite often in a control system where the input represents our desired behavior and the output represents what actually happens. So in that case, we can just define the steady state error as the difference between what we put in this value and what we got out, which is this value. So if the steady state error approaches a constant value, then we quite, quite often uh, represent it this way. It's possible, though, sometimes for steady state errors. So we'll draw another response. And maybe the system gets to the point where it just basically spends a lot of time going above and below the value that we want to have. Uh, situations where this might occur is, for example, in a uh, air conditioning system where the temperature gets a little above what we want it to, and then the thermostat turns on the compressor and the fans, the temperature goes down, and then uh, it actually gets a little below where we want it to, and then the temperature goes back up and so on. So in this case, typically the steady state error will be the largest deviation from what we want, in this case, what we want and what we have. So um, again, in this case where you end up with sort of an oscillating steady state, uh, you can, or we define the error as the largest error that we're likely to get. So again, that's the difference between what we wanted and what we got.
Okay. And again, if you have a system that's on this this purple line represents the output of a system that's stable. It's just a system that doesn't come to a final uh, value. It's co it comes to a final uh, waveform that oscillates. Um, unstable systems, uh, the output gets larger and larger and larger, or oscillates with a higher and higher amplitude until something breaks. Okay, so that's the idea of um, steady state error. Another thing that we oftentimes are interested in is what we call the settling time. So the settling time is the time between when the input, in this case the step function, goes up, and the output, say this guy, drops down so that the error between the output and the desired value is always less than some preset threshold, maybe 5% of the uh, of the value we want the output to settle to, or um, two percent, but the idea is that um, we look at the time it takes for the input to start, and from that point on to the point where the steady or where the error uh, drops below some threshold. So this time is called the settling time. which I'm pretty sure I just misspelled. Oh, that was bad. We'll ignore that. Okay. So the settling time basically tells us how long it takes the system to get pretty close to steady state. Um, another thing that we might look at, or value that we might look at, is the time it takes our signal to go from, say, 10% of its final value to 90% of its final value. Okay, so the time that it takes to go from 10% to 90% this time here is often called a rise time. And again, this is the time it takes to go from essentially close to nothing to essentially close to the to the final value. Uh, rise times are particularly big issues in uh, digital circuits because the longer it takes for a signal for an output to go up in response to a unit step input, the uh, slower your circuit runs. And as we all know, slow circuits tend to be less useful than fast circuits. Okay, one last quantity that we can talk about. Uh, quite often, particularly in systems that are uh, second order or higher, your signal goes up to the, to the desired value and then it jumps up above that desired value and comes back down. This distance here, the distance above the desired value, is called the overshoot. because we've overshot the value we wanted to go to. And overshoot is quite often represented, you can represent it as an absolute value, or you know, as, a, as just the distance from here to here, or sometimes it'll be represented as a percentage. So I take the distance that I've overshot, and I divide that by the distance that I wanted to go up, and express that as a percentage, and that is my percentage overshoot. So these are several different methods or uh, definitions, actually, of uh, different quantities that you're interested in when you're characterizing how a system responds. Um, and particularly, these are uh, most often uh, used when you're designing control systems. Uh, you have these trade-offs between overshoot, rise time, settling time, and steady state error. And typically making one of them better makes the others worse. It's not always the case, but usually you have to, you have trade-offs between uh, making, say, the rise time very fast and making the settling time very fast. Uh, it's hard to do both. So, 
Uh, that concludes this uh, video on the characterization of system responses.